Bingo, our, bear, our black, the black bear here in Sizzler is our flagship animal. It's by our number one call for service here as far as you know, animal control call. So um, today we're fortunate to have our area uh, game warden, state uh, conservation officer on the game board. Edward Yescott, who's one of our more senior, the senior game board, one of the trainers is on the, uh, on the bear team. And, uh, state biologist, fur bear biologist here, uh, Jason Hall. So we've got two really deep, two experts that are experts in this field. This is what they do day in day in day out. So these are the folks that I turn to, and us in the town of Sinjari, Sinjari Police Department, here, they help us out. We have we're fortunate here in the town of Sinjari because we have a fantastic relationship working with our state uh, agencies. So they've been fantastic to work with. So. Mark, thank you. And actually, uh, for you. Is everybody here from Simsbury or some people from, okay. Mark actually does a really good job for Simsbury and we work with him a lot. So it's been uh, really useful through the years just to have someone to go to. Um, what we hope to accomplish tonight is nice to see people interested. Everyone has brought in their own ideas about things and uh, what we'd like to do is be able to answer almost any of your questions that you have and probably someone has the secret question we can't answer. I'll tell you when I hear that one. <laughs> but besides that, um, we have a little presentation with a lot of information, and we will try to just answer any of your questions or, or concerns that you have, and maybe let you know a little bit more about how to deal with the bears in your uh, neighborhood, etc. Okay. Do I just go right into the? Yeah. Jason is the uh, one of the biologists for DEP, and he's the bear biologist. So he's the go-to guy for dealing with the bears. All right. So I have given a couple of presentations in Simsbury before. Mark and I actually did one. What was it? Six years ago. Yeah, five, six years ago. I think. You know, my first time in Simsbury. Huh? This isn't going to be my normal bear talk. Normally, I, I'll go into some natural history of bears. Um, I'll talk about the history of our bear program. I'll talk about bear biology. From the way this was related to me, this is more about issues specifically with black bears that we have in towns. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the town of Simsbury. Um, so as, as a bear biologist, I kind of deal with everything. Um, you know, Mark deals with Simsbury, and most of our probably complaint calls that he deals with. Ed deals with every state, probably mostly complaint calls. I kind of do everything. I do research, management. Um, we we help form a lot of the, the legislation that goes forward. Um, after it leaves, leaves my hands, I have no idea what happens to it, so I you know, really can't take any claim to that. But we at least make proposals based on science and data. Um, and then it's up to the legislators to do with it as they please after we propose um, changes in statutes or regulations based on data and science that we've collected. So um, I often say that I deal in science and facts, not anecdotes and emotions. A lot, of, a lot of people wish I would uh, incorporate a little more emotion into my job, but that's not part of my job. If I was doing that, I wouldn't be doing my job correctly. Um, so I'm going to just talk real quickly about um, how the problems, how, how the bear population in Connecticut has grown and how the problems, why we have problems, and how the problems have grown with the bear population and what we think the solution, and I say the solution is to uh, our problem with bears, because I do believe there is a solution, not solutions. Um, some of you have probably seen this, so it doesn't show up very well, but, um, but the light the light pink, you can see it's, so that's one to 25 sightings by towns back in 85, 86. So this is when bears were just kind of first starting to um, reestablished in Connecticut. Like, you know, down here it looks like maybe there was a couple bears here, but this is probably one male bear that was just walking around and getting sighted a few times. Uh, so, 1991, you kind of see where the 
population is starting to establish uh, pretty much the northwest part of the state. Again, these little clusters over in the east, that's probably one bear up in the northeast and one bear down in the southeast. So uh, again, cluster 95, 96. Then we start to see some of these towns, uh, what is it, Hard Cancer? The dark red one. I get my time. You can see where the where, the, where really it's uh, the sightings are starting to cluster up there. And now, of course, Simsbury is kind of the epicenter. Doesn't necessarily mean there are more bears in Simsbury. It means there's a lot of people and a pretty decent bear population. Um, so again, it doesn't mean that in 2003 there were more bears here than there were here. There's not a lot of people over there to see the bears. So, so the problem develops right before our eyes. 2005, 2006, start to see some of those towns with over 100 sightings. Um, included in that are conflicts, so reports of conflict. Um, again, 2007, 2008, seems very great uh, mix of it. I think this is the most recent map I have. I got okay, to make. I've been so busy dealing with bears, right? I haven't, <laughs> haven't had time to make a more updated map, but you get the idea. So really the epicenter uh, for bear sightings and bear conflicts, really, is uh, you know, western Harford County and Litchfield County. Um, but you can also start to see a spread where we do now have bears showing up statewide. Um, and it's sort, of, it's sort of interesting to watch the progression because the people in towns like Simsbury are, are a lot more familiar with bears because they, a lot of them have talked to me, have talked to other people. They know about the bird feeders, they know about the trash. They're not, most people aren't as concerned when a bear walks through their yard, they don't freak out. Um, some people do. <laughs> I get yelled at a lot, I get yelled at today. I'm just going, um, you know, people want me to come move the bear. I'm like, Sir, where do you want me to move the bear? <laughs> where do you want me to move it? Some guy today wanted us to move it to downtown Harford, was this thing. Officer, you just got to talk to him because he had to be in my office. And I was frustrated. And I was like, here, you take this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, Diversified all of those things. That's right, yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of what's happening now, but then you have these states as that population is expanding out from the northwest, you have people that aren't as familiar with bears. So we're getting calls from people down in like Southbury, the Berries, you know, Woodbury, and they freak out just that they just see a bear. They think the bear's going to like, you know, drag their kids off into the woods and eat them. And, and you know, it's, it's my job, it's a legitimate concern. Um, you know, I can't just blow them off and say, no, that's not a legitimate concern. They're a big animal that they kill people occasionally. It's rare, um, but it does happen. Um, so we deal with a lot of people from the new towns, we call them, towns that uh, bears are just establishing now. And it's a little bit more of a challenge, or I should say a different challenge than a town like Simsbury. A town like Simsbury, we're dealing with these chronic issues where we have chronically habituated and food conditioned bears that in my opinion are have become a threat to public safety certain bears um, you know some people disagree well you know it's not an opinion on my part you know it's based on science and years and years of data that we've seen from bears that have become a threat to public safety and that have hurt people um, is what we're basing it on so um, we try to we try to stay ahead of that when we see bears that are uh, developing those type of behaviors. Um, our solution is lethal removal. It's my number, my job, my number one concern is public safety. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not in the business of you know again emotions, making sure no one's feelings are hurt because the bear in their neighborhood was lethally removed. My job is to ensure that the people in the neighborhood are safe. And if I identify a bear as a potential threat to public safety, then it's going to be lethally removed. And that's the end of the story. And people don't like that, but I guess they don't like how I do my job. Uh, so the, the moral of, of this story is we have reported our bear sightings are increasing. Um, again, if you updated this, which I will, we're getting over 5,000 bear sightings a year. And we 
get a lot of them are, you know, still in the northwest part of the state. Road kills, probably getting over 40 a year, and that's the ones we know of. There, there's a ton of bears that are, bears are really, really rugged animals. They get hit all the time. They, they run off into the woods. Some of them die, some of them don't. We don't know about them. But it's just another index of how the population is growing. Our bear population is expanding and growing every year. Uh, bears have not necessarily a high reproductive rate, but a high survival rate. So um, they, they produce crops every other year. Um, our average in Connecticut is about 2.5 cubs per litter. Um, so again, each adult female re reproduces that every other year, and our survival is close to 80 percent, which for first year survival, which for a wild animal is really, really, really high. So even though they don't have that high reproductive rate, they offset that with a high survival rate. So that's why our population is continuing to grow. We don't really have a lot of mortality, significant source of mortality in Connecticut, other than road kills. Uh, right now in the state, this is based on a study we did with UConn um, and a study that we did in-house at DEP uh, based on our collared bears, based on habitat use and home range size. We estimate about 800 bears in the state of Connecticut. The confidence intervals on that, I mean, you could go higher than that. I wouldn't go a whole lot lower than that. Um, and again, that's continuing to grow every year. So to, to the issue, why, why we're here, I believe, is to discuss problem bears. Um, you know, I've always thought about changing this to problem humans, um, because problem humans create problem bears. I mean, we do have problem bears, but they were created almost always by problem humans. In fact, I can't think of a case where we had a chronic problem bear that wasn't created by chronic problem people. And by that I mean feeding. Um, whether it's, in most cases, it's intentional. Um, people just like to see the bears, whether they think they're doing it. It's selfish, in my opinion. Because most of those people have been educated by me, by um, Mark, by Ed, you know, all our officers that we have. They know that they shouldn't have their bird feeders out. They know that they should secure their garbage. Some people just plain put food out for bears. <laughs> and a lot of times, you know, that's put back on me because, and, and Ed, because we're the ones that then has to go in and kill the bear and we're the bad guys. Um, so it, it can be a difficult situation at times. Um, but again, problem bears created by problem people. And, you know, Bears have big teeth, they're strong animals, they have big claws. Uh, they, even a small bear has the ability to kill a human easily, quickly, um, no doubt about it. They're strong animals and, you know, an 80, I weigh 240 pounds and an 80 pound bear can kill me easily. Um, now having said that, I'm not trying to scare people about bears in general. It's very rare for bears to be aggressive towards humans. Uh, but when they do become dangerous, it's almost always because they're being food conditioned or habituated. And we, the DEP, try to step in before that happens and uh, remove that one bear. Now, I don't, I don't prefer to do that. I would rather have some sort of a, a regulated and ongoing management system in the state where we're not constantly going in and having to remove these problem bears and bears that are being food conditioned. And I can't tell you how many people I talk to, myself and the other biologists on a daily basis, a weekly basis, that have bears, they have little kids, I have little kids, I have three little kids, you know, seven, five, and two. And I, you know, just the other day, I had a 500 pound bear, my kids were in the backyard and the bear came and sat down in my backyard. And I was yelling at it. I mean, it picked the wrong yard. <laughs> it did learn its lesson. Um, but a lot of people, you know, are familiar with how to handle that situation, and in my opinion, shouldn't have to deal with that situation. Because I don't believe we should have bears acting that way. Uh, I mean, we've had bears walk up to little kids when the mom went inside for a minute and start licking their lolly or their popsicle while the mom went inside. I mean, it's to me, it's unacceptable behavior. Um, it's due to a lack of fear of humans, um, and it's due to again habituation years and years and years of whether it's intentional or unintentional feeding. Uh, so it is a serious problem that we're dealing with here in Connecticut. 
Uh, we had a property damage just today. We had to set up traffic in Kent. Uh, some guy was eating dinner. He heard a noise. He turned around, and there was a bear in his dining room. Kent, just walking around in his dining room. I mean, completely unacceptable behavior and very dangerous. Very, in my opinion, very dangerous behavior. I mean, because a bear in a situation like that feels cornered. The guy didn't know the bear was there. He came around the corner, and the bear had nowhere to go. You know, that's that's a situation that's potentially dangerous. So, um, you know, it's kind of we're kind of getting to that tipping point where we, you know, we within the DEP, we don't. It's not our opinion. We know that we have to manage this population of bears. Um, bears naturally forage in the woods on some natural foods. They eat acorns, beech nuts, this time of year, blackberries, raspberries, blueberries, uh, scum cabbage early in the year. Um, but we don't have a natural ecosystem here in Connecticut. We've got people. Uh, we've got really high human density. Um, and I don't think you know, everyone's going to volunteer to just leave and left Connecticut toward the Bears. Um, but that would be one way to solve the problem, but obviously that's not a realistic solution to the problem. And I also don't think everyone wants to just get rid of all the Bears. So we have to find a solution um, that involves Bears and humans. So again, that's my and our very difficult job at that time. So I can tell you, there is a split in Connecticut. A lot of people hate Bears. And a lot of people love bears, they just don't want them in their backyard, which, again, is a very difficult um, ask on our part. So, the problems we have, um, people leaving pet food outside, garbage is a huge one. Garbage day, some bears just know, they go right down the line, they know the street, they know the day when the garbage is coming out. Uh, so, we always advise people, when you do put your garbage out, don't spray, dump ammonia on top of your garbage and put it out the morning of pickup. So if you have an idea when that garbage man is going to come and you're there, if you can put it out a half hour before he's going to be there, you know, I know that's not always realistic for people. I leave for work in the morning and have to put it out when I put it out. Um, but again, every time a bear gets in the garbage, that stays in that bear's head, and, that, and, and you just contributed to the habituation or food condition that every single time he gets in your garbage. Every single time he gets in your bird feeder, you've contributed to the conditioning of that bear, uh, the habituation of that bear. So, bird feeders are bad. Just remember that. If you want to put bird feeders out, put them out in the winter when the bears are in their dens. And you even have to be careful sometimes in the winter. We have years where there's not a lot of snow. Bears are walking around and they can still get your bird feeder. So just kind of pay attention to it. If a bear gets your bird feeder in December, then take it down, wait a couple months, and you can probably put it back up. But for the most part, uh, from December, December 1st through mid-March, usually is a pretty fair, you know, a good time to have your bird feeders out. But any other time than that, the best thing you can do is completely remove the bird feeder. Don't try and come up with some crazy contraption where the bird feeder's 40 feet off the ground because it's still attractive to that bear. There's bird seed falling on the ground and the bears are coming and eating it. And again, you're contributing to the habituation and food conditioning of the bear. And we have all sorts of other issues which aren't as common, uh, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them. But you know, people lose thousands of dollars on bees. Um, Again, we tell people in Connecticut, if you don't have electric fencing around your, your beehives, then you're just asking for the bears to come together. Because it's a natural food source for them, why wouldn't they? Uh, but again, you know, if you're that farmer that's losing those thousands of dollars, it's not funny. It's a, it's a serious deal. Um, livestock, um, goats, cows, sheep, dogs. Um, um, some issues we deal with, probably in, in a town like Simsbury, it's, it's more smaller animals like goats and dogs. Um, goats are usually, it's more of a prey item, so the bear is looking at it as a food. A dog is usually an issue where, you know, we advise people keep their, their dogs on a leash or in a fenced-in area. It's, it's funny, people always call me and they say, my bear got attacked by a dog, and I say, well, I, I try you know, to be tactful about it because their dog's either dead or seriously injured. And I say, well, 
probably, if you describe to me what happened, I can probably describe to you what happened. Your dog ran after the bear, and the bear turned, felt cornered, and defended itself, and the bear's going to win every time. That's just the way it is. But again, um, we also have situations where bears come into people's yards, and I don't think people should have to deal with that either, where they, they can't let their dog run around in their backyard um, you know, with a bear coming in. So it kind of goes both ways. You know, There's things we can do to avoid problems, but when those bears get to the point, the point where they're really habituated or food conditioned, there's really not a lot we can do. We do have agricultural damage in Connecticut, uh, Christmas tree farms, sweet corn is another pretty common one. Again, there's not a ton we can do for these guys. You know, they're allowed, under some of our statutes, they're allowed to lethally remove bears if they're having agricultural damage, but it's difficult for a farmer to spend time, sit out there, and try and get the right bear. Um, you know, we, we try and help them out with traps sometimes, but, um, you know, it's a difficult to do very difficult issue. Christmas tree farms, as I said. Bears like to eat the uh, Herculean layer, layer of the Christmas trees, and sometimes they just like to thrash Christmas trees because they like the smell of it, they rub on them, and they break them. Uh, but, you know, some Christmas tree farmers up north will lose thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars uh, from bear damage on Christmas trees, so it can be a significant issue. Blueberry farms, we have more than you think here in Connecticut. Uh, electric fence is something we always advise to people, so, you know, if you were adamant that you had to have a bird feeder out, put an electric fence around it. It's not as expensive as you think. Um, again, I don't advise having bird feeders out, but if you absolutely feel you have to do it, put an electric fence around it. Um, if you want to protect anything in your yard from bears and you want to stop from conditioning or habituating the bears, put an electric fence around it. Um, we have some guidelines on how to do that on our website. Different, the state of Vermont has guidelines. You can just Google it. Uh, it's a pretty easy thing to do. And it, and it works well. Uh, most bears just won't deal with it. They'll move on. Um, we have a, this, actually, this is a common issue we have in Simsbury. Um, again, these bears are just, you know, they're living in Simsbury. They're used to the smell of people. They're used to the sound of people. Uh, this is a great, this is a den. So our bears, um, they go into a state, they're not true hibernators, they go into a state called Corper, which their respiration lowers, their heart rate lowers, but not quite to the place or to the point of hibernation. So they're still alert, uh, they're still awake, um, but they love denning under people's porches because in often cases, especially when someone has a heated basement, that bear gets in there and puts their body up against the, the heated concrete, they're burning probably half the calories that they would normally burn when they're out in a normal den in the winter. So um, biologically and physically, it really makes sense for a bear. Well, a lot of people don't want, this was like a 500 pound bear under their porch. Some people love it. Um, you had one people, one person that had like a webcam under there, like other friends watched it. But again, it's one of those things that we try and stay away from because we don't, we don't like to humanize the bears and you know, make them with teddy bears because then we run into problems where people are feeding them. And then when we have to lethally remove them, they're a little bit, uh, they can get a little more upset. Of it. So, so we're stuck with uh, management options. Uh, our population's growing. We know that, right? That's happening. The range is expanding. That's happening. We know that. These are facts. This is based on data and science. And we know that our conflicts are increasing. And we know that our threats to public safety due to bears are increasing. These are facts, they're not our opinions. Um, so, what do we do about it? Uh, we have a few, few options um, that we can look at. We can do nothing, which some people suggest, just let the bears, let the population keep growing. Well, I think that's a pretty terrible option, especially when you're talking about public safety. Increase public education, uh, regulate activities. Well. That's what I'm doing right here, public education. But there's only so much you can do, because even in a town like Simsbury, if I could have everyone in the town of Simsbury here and educate them, some people aren't going to believe me, some people aren't going to care, and we're still going to have people out feeding bears, we're still going to have people lazy with their garbage, um, and we're still going to have bears getting habituated and food conditioned. 
Um, regulating activities, well, again, this is another thing where we can try and regulate activities. So we within the DEP uh, proposed, I think it was a regulation, it was a regulation statute, a regulation change, um, a ban on feeding bears in Connecticut. Uh, I went through the DEP and then it hit some sort of legislative roadblock. I don't know what those terms mean. Once it gets out of my office and out, out of my division, um, there's not a lot I can do about it. So we tried to address that issue. Um, we think it would have really helped. It wouldn't have solved the problem for sure, because people are still going to do it, and we still got a growing bear population that has no fear of humans. But it certainly would have helped if you know people that were intentionally feeding bears or unintentionally and then warned could get fines for feeding bears because really what they're doing is creating a public nuisance, a threat to public safety, and probably creating a bear that's going to end up being a dead bear that we're going to feed them. So within the DEP, we have our limits of what we can do. We tried. It didn't make it through the, for the legislature for whatever reasons. I don't know the details of that. So we can adjust our response within the DEP um, and decrease tolerance. We've kind of done that. Um, as our bear population has grown, um, we're not quite as tolerant to bear behavior. So I used to talk to people on the phone and they would tell me, there's a bear hanging out in my yard and my kid's swimming in the pool. What do you want me to do? Well, I'll take the air horn, blow the air horn, you know, hit it with a paintball gun. First of all, I don't think people should have to do that. Um, uh, you know, and the kid's in the pool and the bear's right there. I mean, in my opinion, people shouldn't have to deal with that. Um, so we've tried to respond more to those situations when bears are becoming bold. We do some aversive conditioning, which I'm going to talk about. But again, most of those things just, they're very short-term solutions. And in the long run, they don't work, especially when you have, you know, again, problem people that are that are helping the situation. But we have tried number three. Uh, contraception is a whole other issue. As as a bio a bear biologist, I can tell you, and you have a hard time finding a bear biologist in North America that would say this is a legitimate option, contraception. We could get into all sorts of de details of why it's not a legitimate option, but I can tell you it is not. Um, you know, one of the most recent, just quickly, one of the most recent drugs that was just um, research was called Neurosol for bears. They had to take it orally and it basically castrated them. And not all of them through you know an oral dose that was put in the bait, but it didn't work for every bear. And if you missed one bear in an area, he mates all the females. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a, waste, it's a waste of time, it's a waste of money, it's a waste, it doesn't work. Um, so it's not an option. Official calling, euthanasia, that's kind of what we do right now. We don't call, uh, but if we identify bears, like we had one in Simsbury uh, a couple months ago, the lady got scratched up pretty good on her leg. Um, we euthanized that bear. Um, that bear made contact with the lady. I mean, I saw she had, you know, big, I don't care how it happened, I don't care how it happened, I don't care what the dog was doing, I don't care what she was doing, I don't care what the bear was doing, that bear attacked her, and there was claw marks on her, and it's my job to remove that bear from the, the population, because it's a threat to public safety, and it injured a human. So, that's just the way it is, and uh, that's our policy, and we're probably going to become even less tolerant about, about you know, bear behavior like that. Um, but it, again, it was an unfortunate situation. She had cubs. Cubs were old enough to survive. We actually have reports of those two cubs. They're still alive now. They're on their own. People didn't believe us when we said, you know, these cubs will be fine, but um, science prevailed and the cubs are alive and they're fine. Uh, but everyone becomes a bear expert when bears are in the news. That's just how it is. Um, aversive conditioning. We do this a ton, and I'll, I'll show you some examples of this. Again, this is a more of a short term. So if you have a bear that comes into your yard and is acting bold towards you, well, I say I think that's unacceptable behavior <coughs> that bear charged you. So we're going to go set a trap. And 
we'll catch the bear and we'll do aversive conditioning and we we'll release it on site with hopes that that bear will associate that negative experience with your house. Usually it works at your house, but then bears goes cause a problem with your neighbor's house. So, yeah. again, it's, it's a solution, but it's, I don't know, it's really not a solution. Uh, but we do have specific policies of when we would use aversive conditioning, when we would do nothing, and when we would use things. And there are certain things, you know, if, it, if a bear enters a house, we use an eyes. Um, if a bear shows aggression or makes contact with a human, we euthanize it. Um, it's something that, I mean, obviously I don't enjoy going in and euthanizing a bear, especially when it's something where the bear's not being used. We do a knee cross down and we throw them in a pit and they rot. Uh, to me, it's a waste. I would much rather have that use source be used through a regulated management, regulated hunting season, which, in my, not really my opinion, science and what science and data have shown us is the only way to effectively manage a bear population. The only way. There's no other way to effectively, I, mean, I don't care what anyone says, find a bear biologist in North America said there's another way to effectively manage a black bear population. Hunting or harvest is it. So we get to our last option, regulated hunting. Um, I mean, again, this is, before we talk too much about hunting, I'll, talk, I'll give you some examples of uh, the other things, aversive conditioning. We do use traps, culvert traps like this. We catch the bears. We Sometimes we use foothold or uh, cable restraint traps. We drug the bears. Um, we weigh them, we deer tag them. Sometimes we have other animals trying to get in our traps. Again, we do whatever we can to make it as unpleasant as we can for the bear. Um, we spray in the face with pepper spray, we shoot them with um, beanbag rounds, we don't, we hurt the bear as badly as we can without injuring the bear, it's basically the concept. It sounds cruel, but we're potentially saving the bear's life by doing that. Again, sometimes it, for certain bears, it can work. For most chronically habituated bears, it doesn't work. They'll just go down the road and bother their neighbors. But we do what we can. And we put a lot of effort into it. Well, there's obviously yes guy right there shooting a bear with a bean bag. Um, again, it hurts. They hurt bad. We want them to hurt, but they don't injure the bears. The bears remember it. So here's kind of the concept of what we do. We want to know where people were yelling. Uh, we use kind of these souped-up paintball guns, and they hurt bad. Yeah, that's what we want them to do. And that bear never came back to that house. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, here's another one. Again, it looks, it looks. I'm not laughing at the pain of these bears, but you know, it's something we're doing this because we care about the bear population, uh, and we're doing what we can uh, to alter the behavior of these bears, as difficult as it might be. Um, we do our best. I mean, we spend, I don't know how many of these we do a year at, uh, with a yeah. horrible, on a lot of them, but, uh, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of states would just euthanize, a lot of states, you know, the bears that were reversibly conditioning, they would just euthanize them. Um, I mean, we do make more of an effort than most states do, most governments do, use non-lethal, less than lethal management. But in the long run, it's not effective. What I'm saying. Again, so that bear remembered that. Didn't come back to that house. Again, I can show you hundreds of records where the bear that showed up at someone else's house and was involved in some, some you know, other sort of damage. So um, they kind of have short term memories and they're, and they're completely guided by their stomachs. Um, which is understandable. I mean, that's, they're a wild animal. Um, their job is to uh, reproduce, and in order to do that, they have to stay alive as long as possible, which involves eating and drinking. So it's, very, it's a very simple life for a bear if you do it that way. The amount of calories that a bear can get from a bird feeder versus foraging naturally, it's not even close. It makes sense for a bear to go to a bird feeder. Uh, and that's why it's such a 
temptation for it. It's so hard um, for us to manage that situation specifically. Um, other troops we deal with, urban bears, this is less of an issue. This is just part of a growing bear population. We get bears, this isn't like Waterbury. Where are these bears? They're not really nuisance bears. They just wander into, you know, areas, downtown areas. We do our best. We drug them, we get them out of the tree. And every single time they fall, we get the net perfectly. Every time. Right in? Yeah. <laughs> Especially when NBC and CBS and ABC are there. They always hit the net. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when they go, obviously I'm joking. Whenever they miss the net, then we're the, the big bad DEP that's you know, torturing the bears. Although we're trying to help the bear by getting it out of the city and bringing it to suitable habitat. I mean, we have bears. This is downtown Farmington, right near, what's that school? It's Porter's. Yeah. And then a, a willow tree, like probably. 100 yards from Miss Porter's school. Uh, so that's just the kind of habitat these bears are using. It already left the den. Yeah, it already left the den. That's the right? Um, this is in Simsbury. This is the culvert, I don't know, near one of the golf courses. I don't remember which one. She bent right in the culvert. Uh, so these bears are using, you know, what's there for them. Uh, in, some, in some instances, there's really not a lot for them. So we do work as far as tagging cubs. You can see a lot of people think cubs are cute, but when you get towards the end of April, they are wild animals, and they will, I can, I can tell you, they will scratch you, they will bite you, um, they, they are not heavily little teddy bears. Um, and it's amazing how quickly that happens. Um, how, they, how quickly they go from being, you know, a kind of helpless animal, and then like a month, they're like a Tasmanian devil. Trying to pick them up, we have these special uh, So. It seems where everyone kind of understands these. Again, this is part of our education. These are, you know, the things we can do um, as far as, you know, non-lethal management, education, versus conditioning are really the big things. Um, we always advise people never to approach bears. Everyone here probably understands most of that. I go over this more in like times where bears are new. Um, bird seed, compost, garbage, pet food, all of it. Keep it inaccessible to bears because if you're not, then you're contributing to a problem, you're creating a public hazard, and you're probably contributing to the death of that bear eventually, or very likely. Uh, so again, um, you know, the, again, December, early December through mid-March is a good time to keep the bird. Uh, so back to our management options, we kind of talked about. Really, you know, we try the work of conditioning. We do that when we can. But again, back to regulated hunting. Um, we did, you know, the DEP did uh, propose, we came up with three different options of how a regulated hunt would look in Connecticut, because we believe um, that our population is growing, especially too much within urban areas or suburban areas. Um, man regu regulated hunting, so even if it's hunting, it doesn't mean you have to hunt within the suburban areas of Sinsbury. If you're hunting, in the forest areas around, it still lowers the bear population. It decreases conflicts with humans. Um, it creates uh, a healthy fear of humans by bears. Um, there are so many benefits of regulated hunting. Not only that, uh, the bears are a renewable resource. So hunters that respect the animals are harvesting the animals hum humanely. Um, they're using the hide, they're using the meat. Bear meat is um, it's a really good meat. A lot of people prefer to deer meat and moose. Uh, whereas when we go in and kill a bear, I cut it open, look at its stomach, and I dump it in a pit, and it rots. It goes to waste. So there are a lot of a lot of benefits of regulated hunting. Uh, again, when I say regulated, they're highly it's you know highly regulated, especially in a state like Connecticut. Um, so lots of benefits. It changes the population. It changes the way bears act around people. If you go to the state of Maine, so. Bear biologists all kind of know each other. I know bear biologists in Maine, Vermont, they know us. If you go to the state of Maine, which has one of the highest bear populations outside of Alaska, and there are bears everywhere. Uh, I spend a lot of time there because my in-laws are there. You don't see bears there. People have bird feeders in their yards. You don't, bears don't come into people's yards and take their bird feeders. Bears don't walk into people's backyards when their kids are in their pool. It doesn't happen because bears have a healthy 
fear of humans due to regulated hunting. Um, and even with it, Maine has a pretty liberal hunting season, and they're still not causing their bear population. Their bear population is still increasing, even with the, the very liberal harvest that they allow in Maine, their population continues to increase. Um, but it does a lot as far as helping to stabilize the, the population and, uh, again, just creating that healthy fear of humans. So within DEP, we believe this is the only option to effectively manage our bear population. We provided um, three options. Um, so I think it was Senator Minor, one of the senators out of Senator Ripley. Richfield uh, was the one that wrote the bill, sponsored the bill. I don't know who, how that, all that works. Um, but they asked for three options for us, how a hunt would work. Um, we took it very seriously because we think it's important. We think it's becoming more of an issue. We think it's becoming a threat to public safety. Um, it, didn't make, it didn't make it through. So we don't have a bear hunting season. You know, so the biologists, the people that are paid to... Um, manage research and manage the population. We said this is our best option, this is what we think we need to do, but it didn't happen. Um, we think it's a very serious issue. Some representatives and senators, and they probably don't live in bear habitat like we do, uh, didn't think it was a very serious issue, with, which might, you know, kind of bothered me. Here's, here's one example of an amendment uh, by Senator Flexer of the 29th District, which I, I found, you know, pretty unprofessional. Uh, so the amendment uh, on our act authorizing bear hunting in Connecticut says, Pike to the October 1st, notwithstanding any provision of the general statutes, no person shall hunt any black bear if such bear is one, smarter than the average bear, two, fed from a picnic basket, Three, merely nibbling or moshing. Four, featured in or associated with any film production of the Walt Disney Company. Or five, fed from a honey pot, provided such pot is of sufficient size as determined by the Commissioner of Energy and Environment Protection. So, obviously, yes. If, if we have 30 out sixes and we want to kill the bear because we have I mean, fear of our life, where do you shoot it? In the middle of his head? I would defer that yeah, question to yeah. Officer Yes, Can I, can I, Oh, okay. I was going to speak or I want to speak about what we do in Sims Very too, but yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is a. Uh, well, let, me, let me just finish. I'm just yeah. about done here. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Say, yeah, well, I'll answer. Again, yeah. you know, in the end of this, such that the tongue snout and head of such bear has sufficient space to extend, lengthen, and explore as applicable without becoming stuck in such a pot. So, the kind of made, in my opinion, this is a very serious issue. I don't think joke. I'm not saying all representatives and all senators think it's a joke, but clearly one did. Just more. Um, and, you know, I, I found it a little bit offensive. I know a lot of people did. A lot of people that are scientists found it offensive. Um, and I think more people should know about this. Because right. Senator Flexer of the 29th District, which is, I think, a area. And in my opinion, it's not a joke. Um, we, we, we're doing our best. We tried to um, you know, get a hunting season to harvest through. It didn't happen. But again, that's out of my hands. All I can do is provide uh, science, data, and facts. And you know, I, they make the decisions, and I have to respect those decisions. And I most often do respect those decisions. But this one, I found a little bit overboard. <laughs> a little bit of a, a little bit of a slap in the face. Uh, but again, that's that's one. That's one senator, but I, you know, it's just it's one of those things. It's it's frustrating when you know you're trying to do your job based on science and data, and you know, things like that happen. So um, that's the end of what I have. Uh, so to speak to it. Yes. So you mentioned there's one way you could call that bear. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's the uh, statistics on that? How many other incidents have there been? Uh, as far as physical contact. Um, Injury. Injury, um, it's not common. Um, I would say the reason, one of the reasons it's not common is we, within the DEP, we monitor these situations. So a bear doesn't usually go from, go from being a normal wild bear out in the woods foraging to a bear that's going to attack people. Usually they're warning signs. So we're usually familiar with a bear that's 
getting to this point. We were actually familiar with the bear that attacked that woman at Simsbury. She had done some kind of some borderline things um, that hadn't completely uh, you know, made her a candidate for euthanasia, um, but she was close. You know, she had done a few things, so she was on our radar. I guess would be a good way of of saying it. Um, so, you know, it's a one, maybe two a year, Ed, as far as yeah. injuries. Yeah, two. I think two a year. A lot of. Them. But I think a lot of that is because we we had one in the past. When bears start developing that aggressive, bold behavior towards people, we remove them from the population. We've been. Uh, we're pretty proactive about it. We don't. We don't take a chance. We have a growing bear population. Removing a couple bears from the population isn't going to touch the population as far as growing. It can increase um, public sentiment. So people, if you leave bears that are causing, causing problems in the population, it's going to cause public sentiment um, to be negative towards the bears. So people are going to, oh, this bear keeps breaking in my house, keeps doing this. Because you know, if you just remove these few problem bears, bears that are chronic problem bears, it can actually help public sentiment. Um, so I guess I like to believe part of the reason we don't have a lot of um, issues with bears you know, causing physical injury to people is because we're pretty proactive and we don't give bears second chances if they display any behavior that we consider uh, potentially threatening towards humans or potential public threat, we remove it from the population. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I wanted to say hi to everyone. I'm State Representative John Hampton. I'm so glad you could all come here tonight. Unfortunately, I was detained. I got stuck behind a car accident. Um, but I wanted to thank our friends from uh, John, DEP, and of course, uh, uh, Mark Ritowitz from Simsbury PD, who does such a great job. And um, yeah, when I did talk to my colleagues about at the Capitol about what I was doing tonight, I did have to repeat that I was sponsoring a bear forum because many people in the state don't appreciate this issue. Um, it is a an issue we take seriously in Simsbury, and I grew up here and was born and raised, so I know we are bear country. And in fact, I think we're the only town that has a Facebook page dedicated to. Um, if you haven't been on it, it's Simsbury Bears Unite, um, <laughs> but uh, some, with some pretty interesting photos and. Um, but we do get, I've gotten um, so many calls, as my aide will attest, and emails um, about, it was probably, Jason, probably more than any other legislator at the Capitol, uh, about bear concerns. Um, but I have to tell you, the most um, uh, email activity I got was related to hunting of the bear. I got hundreds of, please do not hunt the bear. So, to your point, I know that's one of the, the issues that you're talking and about. Is Part a, of the problem, in, from my perspective, is same problem as with that senator. They live in an area where there are sure. bears. Yeah. The majority of Connecticut doesn't have bears or bear problems like people that live here. So it's not their problem. They don't care. Out of sight, out of mind. So I think that's, and most of the senators and representatives from, you know, Harvard yeah. County and Litchfield County seem to be pro bear hunting as well because they're hearing about it from their constituents. Whereas the rest of Connecticut, it's not an issue, so the senators, the representatives, they don't care, you know, they're not getting pressure. So I think that's part of the problem is there's this disconnect. Is this um, not a big hunting state in general? I mean I come from the Midwest um, and hunting is No, it's not it's not part of the culture like it is in, in states like, like Wisconsin, Wisconsin Michigan. Michigan. Yeah, I mean Republicans. Lots of Democrats hunt. It's you know, it's I wouldn't necessarily say that. It's 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 not part of the culture. In Connecticut, like I mean, like it is in some, like Wisconsin. I think up they, until they recently, be, uh, their opening day of hunting season was a uh, state holiday. Where the, one of my there. companies that was in um, Upper Wisconsin, they closed on opening hunting. Yeah, a lot because of those so Midwest, many people showed up for work. A lot of those Midwest states. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of people don't understand it. Um, they think there's gun wielding people out in the woods shooting at their houses. I mean, we're Hunting, again, Ed can speak more on that, but we're, hunting is highly regulated in, in Connecticut. Um, we have a very strong safety record here in Connecticut. Um, but again, maybe areas like where we are, Simsbury up into like Granby, Heartland, over to Culver, it, hunting is more of a part of the culture in that part of the state. So there, there's a disconnect. Um, you know. Well, I'll let you continue the program, but it is such an important issue here that I'm so glad that you came out, and Mark, we're so lucky to have you and to have this forum to educate folks yeah. and 
I'll let you continue. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much, I'm going to let Ed answer. I have a quick question. Yes. You mentioned sometimes, uh, you know, a lot of people may have been easier to the point where it's unacceptable. Right. Uh, going back 50, 20 years, I never saw a bear in my property. Right. Now it's a regular event. Right. Uh, and obviously, you know, I mean, I'm not going to run out and try to investigate what the bear is doing. Right. But at what point do you consider that to be um, unacceptable? The in thing, terms of general safety, I mean, right, having right. a bear roaming around makes well, me concerned going out in the evening. I, think, know, I think that is sort of a dynamic, in my mind, it's sort of a dynamic answer. It's changed. I used to be more accepting of bear behavior 10 years ago. Now I'm a little less tolerant of because, because I've seen the problem developing. And I used to be like, oh, you're just whining, blah, 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 because the bear's hanging out in your yard. Get used to it, bears are here. But as the population has grown, maybe as I've gotten older and become a parent myself, um, I, I really don't think people should have to deal with these bears that are, have no fear of people. Um, they're just lounging in their yard. The kids are in the pool. There's nothing they can do to get the bear to leave their yard. They're, they have to go inside, and the bear's kind of in control. Um, <laughs> right, right. When you so, said you, the bear picked down the wrong house, when he came to your house, what did you do that got the bear to... Well, I had a shotgun with um, beanbag rounds, which, and most people don't have that, right. you know. So if, if I'll let Ed talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody kind of, like, I had a bear every other week on my back steps, yep. now, would you consider that unacceptable? Should I have called the... Control? I consider it unacceptable, but we have certain policies because we can't just keep... We can't euthanize every bear for, I mean, because, so, all right, to, to really break it down, the behaviors that we really focus on are when a bear becomes aggressive towards a human. Um, and, again, there's sort of a fine line there, or a blurry line, I should say. When a bear becomes aggressive, so if you're in your yard and, you know, you're hoeing in your garden and a bear sees you, you make yourself known to the bear, and that bear continues to come towards you, really continues to come towards you in any way, I mean, let alone making you know, aggressive posturing or anything like that. That's, in my opinion, that's completely unacceptable. I believe that bear should be removed from the population. Um, we haven't really gotten to that point with our policy. Um, right now, it's things like, if a bear's chronically being bold and aggressive towards a person, like so we have you know multiple reports of it. If a bear enters a house, we euthanize it immediately. Uh, what are some of the other things? Killing we livestock. Killing livestock if we you know are pretty certain it's the same bear. But in her situation, that would freak me out. Yes. Like, what do you do? What is the problem? Uh, call your call your local representative and senator and say you support uh, a bear harvest. <laughs> yeah, but what should what should she do to get the right um, in, 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 in the short term in the short term I I often well Technically, I don't know if that would be legal in that situation. No. Uh, the, the air horns, the boat horns, yeah. actually work really well. Um, again, don't go outside with the bear, yeah. open a window, blow that air horn. They, most bears that actually, they do not like it, it causes them to run off. And the more you do that, you're actually conditioning that bear in the right way. Okay. Um, so it didn't like that, that noise, and it's leaving your yard, that's a good thing, and there's less chance that it's going to come back. People that are a little more bold, again, I never suggest people go out and approach a bear, but if you could safely go onto a deck or open a window, if you had a paintball gun, something like that, and you wanted to, um, to hit the bear with, again, you want to make it an unpleasant experience for that bear in your yard, and you're helping that bear. You might feel bad and think you're hurting the bear, but you're helping that bear by teaching it, you know, that this isn't a good place to be, I don't want to be around people. But again, those are more short-term solutions. Yeah, would you mind just going over like the legal ramifications of shooting a bear? Because I know here like a couple years ago we had like a bear that was like kind of in a garage and then like it like turned around and then the guy just like shot it in the back and I personally just don't think that's acceptable, you know, like if the bear is like leaving, not hurting anybody, etc. So it's just like I don't necessarily think that shooting a bear, like I just don't want people around my town just like willy nilly shooting bears if like they think that they're on their property. I agree. So could we kind of like go over that just for everyone? So we investigate each case as they come up. And being on your property is not justified to shoot a bear. 
if you are legitimately feel endangered, or your pet is, or your livestock is, you can shoot a bear and, and euthanize a bear, kill a bear. Most people uh, that feel endangered, by the time they were to go inside and get a gun and come out, the danger's gone. So it's very rare that we would have a justifiable killing of a black bear. Now, it's the, most of the time when we would investigate and say, okay, this was fine, is people that have livestock of whatever kind, and the bear keeps coming back, and that person is ready they're to just deal with that bear as soon as it comes. So they, they, they don't have that, they've tried everything else, okay? So a bear in your garage, you, you can kind of chase it out with a broom and shut the garage. I know this, go ahead. Um, so I am, um, from our walks in this presentation, I, I don't really know that much about bears, but I have seen movies and I have seen that, and I know the general fact that animals are usually generally more afraid of you than you are of them. So like, I know like if you do come across a the bear, they're usually minding their own business, like you said, they will sit down and you go on and do nothing. And I come from Miami, and in Miami we deal a lot with gators. Because we, there's tons and tons of gators, and people build homes and communities all around lakes. And usually, gators, they're really aggressive. Actually, probably, I would argue more aggressive than a bear because they will pick a fight with you. Or, you know, like they, they are very, very territorial. So, but generally, I mean, when there's a gator, you just. Gators are very different because they're reptiles. Oh no, 100%. <laughs> Their I'm thought saying, process is totally like different. They're like the nature of like, yeah. being endangered. They're as scary as a bear, I would oh, say. Yeah. So like, generally, like if they're not harming us, we go inside. And we don't bother it because it's their land too. You know? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're right. That's my opinion only just because we mm -hmm. deal with them a lot. And we do put them down or euthanize them when they attack and they are aggressive and they do the same thing, they monitor the gators. See, I'd rather not wait until they attack. That's oh no, well, I agree as I, well, I just feel like I, I don't want people to think so terrible of these bears, they're just in their habitat and they get confused you're right. and you're, they you're, roam. You are right, bears are, it's they're, actually they're not very rare animals. for bears right. to be aggressive yeah. towards people. Even in Connecticut, it's rare. Um, but, I can't read a bear's mind. And neither can you. But I, yeah, and I, and I totally stand behind that. If, when, if, if they keep approaching, they keep approaching. I understand, but I feel like like the bear in the garage, for example, I don't feel like it would, the grounds of killing the bear was, if the bear was wandering away and minding his own business, you know, he just wanted to I don't know that specific. We are managing a, the, a whole population of bears. We're managing. Well, I just hope people don't find them. No, I know. I understand. What I just want to understand, we're managing the bear population, and there's not any one or two bears in that group that are so important to us that they can't be taken out of it if they don't fit our profile, which is safety. So a bear that we have a history of tending towards aggression, or like what happened in, at, at the town forest that actually attacked a lady. In Florida, a bear attacked a lady a couple of years ago. They didn't know which bear it was, they killed 12 bears, because that was the amount of bears that they could find in that town. They just euthanized every single bear. And their bear population still increased. Oh, I, I mean, I don't know anything about that story. I mean, I, I commend you guys for actually tagging the bears and carrying and keeping told, like, yeah. you know? That's, I was just relating yeah. them to No, I know, I appreciate that. Just like, I, I don't know, I just, I just know gators are very scary, and we let them be, and I know bears, seem more scary than they are because they are big and they are really dangerous. That's very true. Like, yep. Bears look yeah. huge and scary. And, I want to have Mark have a minute to tell you more specifically about what bears are going to do in Simsbury. I mean, what Mark does in Simsbury. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, first of all, I just want to make sure that this, you know, they're not advocating let's kill every bear, let's kill every cow, not at all. But there are certain situations where these animals become so human habituated in food condition that it really does warrant its removal for, for, for your protection, that of your property and yourself. What we do in Simsbury here, and I say we, us as a community, really try, we really need to work as far as removing the non-natural attractants, like the biologist said, the conservation officer says. You know, the problem is a fed, bear, a fed bear is a dead bear, but also a fed bear becomes a human habituated 
bear and a food condition bear. And we've had several of them here in town. So my recommendation, and I do a lot of public speaking and a lot of uh, uh, public, you know, information through RSCTV and, you know, Simsbury Life and a lot of meet and greets at the schools and so forth. This to remove the non-natural attractants, like, like Jason said, here there's really there are a limited amount of natural food sources here in the state of Connecticut. You know, the, for the amount of bears, there's not that lot of, a, a lot of vast population. Even though the years ago we had a reforestation and now a lot of the, the, the habitat here, but there's not a lot of natural food sources. So they seek out all your non-natural attractants, which is our, your bird feeders, your sewage, your garbage, your recycle bins. And we recommend removing these things. Now, I don't expect you to live like prisoners in your yards because you, know, you want to enjoy your homes, your yards, but those are some of the things that you can do to remove at least having a bear camp out in your yard. I tell people, wherever you want your bears, where you should place your bird feeder. You know what I mean? It's basically, like bears eat free. You put a sign, bear buffet, bears eat free. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it sounds funny, but these are attracted. There's a, a situation right now in one of the towns where every Friday, it's called Friday with Fred. Um, and I'm almost down the street now. Friday mornings, the bear, bears, garbage is at the corner. Boom, boom. So it'll be, you know, we're, I, what I do is a, a response here. My job's kind of unique here in the town of Is more like a, you know, like a first responder for the wildlife. I'm your animal control, but I carry the, you know, less lethal, the, the beanbag rounds, the noise rounds. So to counter, try to kind of aversive first condition or counter condition or manage that, is I will engage that to, to remove them out of your yard. You know, beating backgrounds, noise rounds, cracker shells, yelling, air horns, um, just to, to keep them on edge. We want to keep them on edge of the, the fear. The problem is, and I'm being absolutely candid, is they may walk 20, 30 yards, two or three yards, you know, and there's, you know, 18 more bird feeders. So we do recommend that. I find in my, my experience, if there's not a food source, that bear's not going to stay. Are they going to lumber through? Absolutely. They're going to walk back into a patch of woods. I've been by your house several times, well, many of your homes, many times. Uh, but the thing is to try to remove these non-natural attractants. As far as a bear, you know, once it makes human contact, pets, livestock, at least our air safety is paramount to the bears. And I'm an animal lover. I, you know, I, you know, this is what I, why I'm into this position. Uh, but. There is, a, there is a point where, you know, removal does warrant it. Two questions are, you know, uh, question, you know, in a town like Kingsbury, we have a lot of hiking trails, mm -hmm. runners, people go out with, with their dogs. What do you recommend if you come across the bear, you, maybe you're surprising him, maybe he's definitely surprising you. Sure. It, first of all, really keep your dog on a leash because it's the law, but also to protect your yeah. dog, okay? Also, going forward, if we are all working together, these bears are going to be less habituated towards people if we can stop the feeding. But to answer your question, like today, you need to stand your ground, be bold, be loud, be aggressive towards the bear. If there's stones, if the bear is close enough, throw stones at it. Don't turn and run. Stand your ground, and that's almost always going to work. It didn't work for the lady in town four or so. Because she did exactly that. She did everything we told her to. And so this is not a guarantee it's going to work with every bear. You're not supposed to turn your back, correct? Well, it, well, just, I mean, yeah, Steve. Well, you wouldn't you know, want to anyway. You can walk away. But I mean, my first reaction was like, get the heck out of here. Yeah. You've got I mean, to calm grab, yourself down. And gather up like, my kids and get them out of there. Do you have a follow up question? No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Now, it's related to that because yeah. I run, we're talking about sure. cleaning your home and yeah. your yard and all yeah. of that, but um, I was running just this past weekend and the largest bear I'd ever seen popped out of, so I'm on a trail, so I've got the road on one side and the woods are right on the other side of the trail. I did not hear, smell, I know. anything. The They're bear very just quiet. came out and it was... That's how it happened with this lady in Great uh, Town Forest, was she was running and she just was on, on top of it. In yeah, that situation, I mean, stop, try to back away, and when a bear has an escape route, that's what they're, the most normal bear is going to take that and go. But don't, just stand up, be bold, let the bear know you're there. Yeah, I was far, and I was two telephone poles okay. away. Okay, fine. So it's not going to run you down. And once it yep. got back in the woods, I just ran as fast as I could. Yeah, you can, past it. you know, you Try might go an extra two miles that day by yeah. turning around. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Okay. But should I 
run with an air horn? Bear I mean, you can. Like yeah. what? Yeah, they're little, they're little mini air horns. They, they, they yeah. seem to work well. Okay. They, they, they do work. Great. Another thing to remember that I often tell people: for every one bear that you see when you're in the woods, yeah. there's probably yeah. ten other bears that saw you and ran away <laughs> before you ever even knew they were there. So they're really not seeking out people. Right. Bears don't like people. The conflicts that we have between bears and people are all directly related to food. Maybe not in the moment, right. but there's food involved in the conflict, in the history of the conflict, somehow. So it's not like, I mean, you can look up extremely, extremely rare cases of predatory black bears that happen out in northern Canada where there's a black bear that's never seen a human and they'll be following them. We may have had, I believe we had actually, one of those extremely rare cases. If any of you are familiar with the Sessions Woods bear, it was a Facebook bear. It was. It was a big, it was kind of a big thing in the, in the media. We ended up euthanizing the bear because it was following her on the trail. Uh, but again, it was based on body language of the bear. And that bear had a history too, but like every time she turned her back, she was doing what she was supposed to do. Uh, she tried everything. She tried being aggressive, tried yelling at it. Every time she turned her back, that bear would take a couple steps towards her. When she turned around, she turned back around, it would kind of back up. You know, it was a classic predatory behavior by a black bear, which is very, very rare. It's the, only, it's the only case I've ever heard of in Connecticut in this area. In most cases, bears want nothing to do with people. Um, even when there's food involved, in most cases, they don't want anything to do with people. It's just these bears like that live, these town bears that tend to get habituated and food condition, those are the ones that, you know, become the problem. And to answer whatever, someone was talking about alligators before, I don't think you have to worry about public sentiment towards bears in Connecticut, because I can assure you, the majority of, of people in Connecticut love bears. I can assure you, the majority of people in Connecticut love bears. So it's not like, and I, I mean, I like bears. I mean, I, I, have, I have nothing, you know, specific against bears. I, I mean, I've dedicated my career to working with bears and studying the population. But, but where people tend to get hung up is they get hung up on the individual. My, I, I love the population and I love the species. I don't love the individual. Again, that's, that's where a lot of the disconnect is with people with the whole animal rights movement. They get hung up on the individual animals. Well, let's save the individual. Well, well, my opinion as a wildlife biologist in my training, I'm willing to sacrifice individuals for the good of the population, for the species. Uh, so if I feel like regulated, a regulated harvest or management is good for the population, which it is, especially in a state like Connecticut, I'm willing to do that because that's what's best for the people of Connecticut, and that's what's best for black bears. So yeah, that's part of the problem, if you understand what I'm saying. People get so focused on like the individual bear, which is not a good thing. We're running a little long. I want to burn through as many questions as we can. Sir? I live in a, 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 a meadow ridge right off the yeah. meadow ridge. Yeah. There's swamp and there's forest right. with bobcats. We have 12, yep. 8 to 10 bears right. within I know. 23 hours. Uh, we have bears in our garage. Close the door, I open the garage. The bear was yeah. there. And I mean, it, I mean, bears came up to the patio. What's your question? My question is, if you're going to kill a bear, yeah. how's the best way to kill a bear? You, you, you could look online and see diagrams of bears. Heart and lungs is the best way. Mm -hmm. Did you have another question? They keep talking about bird feeders. Yeah. We have a young bear who's, this is his first season being let loose. We have two breeding females, mm -hmm. three cubs apiece. Um, he goes after my hanging plants. I think he thinks they're bird feeders. <laughs> Probably, yeah. to be well, a visual cue. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we can be sitting on our could be and wanting to eat them and too. all of a sudden he's climbing. Bears are omnivores and will eat anything. They're very curious animals, animals too. They're beautiful. Playful and yeah. curious. curious. Yeah. I'm going to keep going around the room. Go ahead. So, yeah. I have a oh, No, no, go ahead. Yeah. So, I have a today question, okay? Yeah. Uh, my house is here, yeah. and our garden is about an acre Vegetable away from garden? the house. Yeah. yeah. About an acre away from the house. And then we have a little pool deck that's about this high off the ground. Right. So when the bear comes, he's he's not close to our house. Yeah. He's close to the garden yeah. and the pool deck. So if I'm in the garden or if I'm on the pool deck, what do I do? Okay, this is what you should do. You want to walk around your yard safely to get from one to the other. 
Is that what I you're saying? I have an acre to get back to my house, yeah. so I have no if, you, if the bear knows you're there, most of the time he's going to go. So I, I'm going to deal with the... Um, he's um, there every couple of days. Okay. He comes right by. Why don't you go and buy a uh, paintball gun? And you can then buy these special uh, rounds they shoot him that are hard rubber and just... Be, you're, you're going to learn to like it. It's going to be fun. You just, <laughs> 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 if you were to ring a bell with your I mean, do, bell, I, do I run? Do I stay no. still? Do I act like I'm invisible? What no, do I Just do? like I said before, you got an air horn? Bold? No. Actually, a friend, of I, my, a friend of mine just showed me a video of a bear coming through her yard and of her blowing the air horn, and the bear didn't even turn. So, yeah, it doesn't always work, but it's, you know actually, if, it's actually quite effective. If a bear's in any one of your yards, if you're a Simsbury residence and he's camped out at a bird feeder or anything like you were described to the officer, give us a call at the non emergency number and call us. One of us will respond, I'll respond, at least we will discharge just what we showed in the video, noise rounds, stuff, at least to try to, but we can definitely move them out of your yard. I would like, well, I would like to add to that. Yeah. I would like to add to that specific question. I don't believe that you should have to do that. Right, I well, do. I agree, but I'm talking today, like yeah. to tomorrow, if I'm in the garden, right. what do I do? That's, that's the, yeah. I guess do that's I the best still? advice. Do I try to look big? I'm no, you, sure. you people, it's, <laughs> it's like you saw a 13-year-old uh, boy who's <laughs> causing trouble. Just be the bold lady that you are, and yell at him, and throw rocks at him, and, you know, take a stand. And it's going to work for you almost forever. If I just stand <laughs> still, is that it? Well, a sure, you can stand still and watch it. You want the bear to know you're there, she's an opportunity to leave. That's, that's what I'm trying to get to. And then one thing you referenced, um, so we have handouts in the back, and yeah. you said there's an emergency number, and there's also just a, a report sighting number, correct? Yeah, and so you can report sightings online. Number, right? Yeah. Also, so we do have a handout. Also, all the, all the senators and representatives are going to start to hate me, but we were just talking <laughs> within our, within our uh, division. I'm gonna have, I get so many calls that I can't provide people with a good answer for because they've tried air horns and they've tried this. And I'm going to have a map, right? I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to give them the name of their representatives and their senators from their town and say, I can't fix your problem. Some sort of regulated so harm is coming out to your house is what it's <laughs> so, some, some sort of regulated right. harvest will in my opinion, we'll fix the problem. Here's the name and the number of your representatives from, from your district. What's but that's, the number that's, that's, number? But that's what I can do for people. That's what I can offer. I don't know. I think you listen here. Oh, you said call an animal. Oh, oh yeah. Well, well, you, you listen to the yard. I'll leave a stack of my cards at the back. So I think it's very resonant. I called him with Jetson. I called him. I think it works, right? I mean, yeah. Okay. Right. Let me just put a final point on that. You can watch this on CTN. It, the, in the Senate, it was split completely down the middle, 18 to 18. Every single Democrat voted against it. So target your calls to the people who voted against it. We'll accomplish more. Ma'am, in the yellow. Yes, it is, are bears nocturnal as well? No. They are naturally diurnal, and they become nocturnal when they're pressured during the day. But they'll be out all, any time that they feel like it, because that's what they do. Yes? Are they... Uh, Will they be turned off from a hot grill? Because that's when I noticed that they came into our Yeah, they'll be attracted to the smell of the burning food, but they're not going to um, lick a hot grill. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah in the back. Yeah. Is there, there seems to be, as long as we knew where they were, can we call them now and have an app on our phone? That's you know what? You're, you want to buy $10,000 college for each bear? I don't think it's well, going to happen. Well, it might be worth it if you can go out in peace to your phone. You know, if you have an app on your phone that says the bears are here, here, and here. Those collars are ten thousand dollars for and it would not for be that feasible. collar. You see the deficit in the state. So, yeah, would not be feasible to physically right. go out. Okay. I'm going to keep going around. Yeah. I guess that's my question: is can you? Like speak to the tagging. What does it mean? Should they be tagged, or is it only oh, sure. a problem? Yeah. Do you want and well, that's, that's very simple. Get no. that's we, very and, simple. We tag and also, do you bear. want us to report if we see? When you do a report so online, like, we'd like to know the color of the tag, the number if you can see it, and about the color. Yeah, uh, the tags. The only thing the tags mean. Uh, every get every bear gets two tags, so there's no like. One tag, two tag, three strike, a lot of people think that. If it has one tag, it's because one tag got ripped out by another bear or something. The co all the color means is the year. So red was 2015. The only color other than all the others that is significant is purple. 
which the bear that we euthanized in the town forest actually had purple tags because she was initially collar or tagged as a nuisance bear. So that's the only collar that's really significant. So tags in the ear, collars around the neck, just right. to be clear of what you're We have 35 bears that wear radio collars. Those bears are part of the research, ongoing research project. Females only. Females only. Could, the number could fluctuate, but that, that's about. Every single bear that we deal with, that we put our hands on for whatever purpose, gets the ear tags, and then it gets two. And they get ripped out over time. What if they don't have tags? Should but they then, be tagged or no? That's only if no, you're no, we, no. We no, if we deal with them, we tag them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I had volunteered with the Florida FWC program, right. and in areas like this where there've been intensive issues with uh -huh. bears. There's a big focus on bear-proof receptacles, trash receptacles. Yes, I try to I don't deal with that. About that here. You know what? I try to deal with that in our commercial establishments because they're dumpsters you're getting hit. Yeah. And to get the, the dumpster companies around here just don't offer that, and what they sell as bear-proof or lease out are not. Right. And you're correct that that is something that uh, I just got a, a youth camp out in Kent. They had to buy one for fifteen hundred dollars yeah. just for the lid to retrofit to the dumpster they yeah. had. So that is available, and it's not being used around here. And eventually, if it, it could be, but the cans you have from the town, they're not bear proof. But they're commercially means. available. I mean, if yeah. you Google online, you'll find you can order for about three hundred dollars. Actually, one of the bigger companies, the manufacturers, is from Connecticut of the bear proof garbage cans. Say that again. One of the largest manufacturers of bear-proof garbage. They're in Plymouth? I don't know. I've been to their place. They, but they're yeah. in Connecticut. Um, the, problem, the problem is a lot of the waste right. companies won't use them because they have to get out and unlatch a little thing. Right. Um, but a lot, of, a lot of towns out west have ordinances required those type of, yeah. of and, you, and people will be heavily fined yeah. if they don't have that type of, right. or if they don't latch it and the bear gets into it, right. they get fined. And, and, the, and the waste companies are required yeah. to you yeah. accept those types of... In one county, in part of one county, Florida has actually mandated mm -hmm. the bear proof trash cans, and yep. that means they've mandated the refuse companies mm -hmm. to smart. be equipped to pick that's, them up. I mean, that's smart. Our, our, our street has a dumpster that's communal to the street that has a has, is bolted through pain. Yep. Which, so, as long as everyone uses it every time, yeah. it works. Man. Sometimes bear sightings, you're in the house and the bear is outside. Mm -hmm. We just moved to the Powder Forest, mm -hmm. right in front of our uh, garage doors, right by the back windows. Right. When that happens, should we open the window and start shouting to scare them away or just forget if you have, If your neighbors are, have a food source and the bear is just walking through your yard, you can do that. It's not going to accomplish anything. Okay, and it's not going to yeah. accomplish it. I just didn't know if that would be helping to As much as it. I really, really, yeah. really like bears, I don't want them in my house. And I take great pains to keep it very clean yeah. of food sources. Okay. I was hoping to learn more tonight about their behavior because last week I went out to my car, was sitting in my car for just a minute or two, yeah. was done, and was about to get out of the car when something caught my eye and there was a bear in front of my car. Yeah. And I was so busy watching that bear walk down the driveway and see the other one coming, a bigger one, and stop right by my car, right by the you know, left front corner. Right. I was terrified because yeah. I had no idea what that bear would do if it saw me. Well, it wouldn't like try to rip your car open. I didn't yeah, know you, he was just going to walk away. I didn't know he was going to climb on top of right. the car. I, I you were safe it. in the car. And that's not unreasonable for you to call the police and say, right. could you come over here and scare the spare away so I can get into my house? Um, we have people, ladies are bringing their groceries in and leave the door open, and by the time they go inside and come back out, there's a bear in their car. So they'll go in a car for a food source. It's That bear was either one of two things. It's mating season's basically over, but it could be pursuing the one well, after so, the other. So I was going to say, it sounds like a, a male I, I do yeah. know because, coincidentally, one of the town highway guys uh -huh. was coming up the street at the time. Yeah. He stopped and was taking pictures of bears right. while I was sitting in the car shaking my leaves. <laughs> and he told me that he knew that the, the first one, the smaller one, was a female. To me, I, I don't know enough about him to know age-wise. I didn't think it was a baby, but it didn't look full-grown to me. 
and he told me he knew that the other one was a male. Well, and that's that sounds like the scenario. So in that case, as long as the female leaves, the male's leaving. Because <laughs> he's staying, he's going to bird dog her. Um, I wouldn't get out of my car. I would just beep on the horn and whatever. Somebody said, why don't you blow the horn? I thought I was so scared I couldn't think yeah. what, you know, of anything. Yeah, Kathy, that's like you said, you could call us too. We'll come out. I yeah. called when I got in the house. Right. Well, and at that point, you were all set. Yeah. Yeah. Sir? You mentioned ammonia. You need yeah. to take, be proactive and dump that ammonia into your, yeah. your, your recycle and into your trash. And you put enough in there, put it in the bag before you put it in. Tie the bag up, throw it in there, spread some of it around. They don't like it. They won't right. come. If they open the bag and they smell it, they'll leave it. And then the other thing is, is you know, we open the door and go out with the dog, and there was a probably 400, 500 pound bear, and you know, the dog can't see it because he's so old. He yelled, and, and of course, I came running down the stairs. The, the thing is, is we turn on the lights in the garage now and there's a radio blaring. I don't yeah. care what time of the night the dog's got to go out, the radio's blaring, going out there, the, the bear knows I'm coming. Yeah. And the other thing is I don't go outside without the, the emergency button on the cars. Because right. the cars are sitting there, you, you blow them, yeah. bear was coming up the driveway at 4.30 in the, in the afternoon. We were coming in, it was a young bear. I just blinked the lights and blew the horn, blinked the lights, didn't really do You know, those are all great ideas of car horn thing, but like Jason was saying earlier, we really shouldn't have to live this way for our whole lives. You know, it's time to do something, and it's up to the legislator. But, but to, to, to finish that is that the neighbor will doesn't do the ammonia. He, yeah. he, he walked out the driveway, went over, picked up the, grabbed the put in his mouth, and he had just been to McDonald's. And went, I mean, basically went to the back of the yard and, and ate the, the trash. Yeah. And I, I said to my neighbor, you've got to make noise and you've got to make it uncomfortable for him. Right. He's got a pool in the back. So he's yeah. got fed water and, and food. So two things, going back to the car, um, the, the bear doesn't have the strength to shake or lift or... I mean, oh yeah, he has the strength to do that. He no, just no. has no desire to do it. Okay. Yeah, okay. you're not attracted to him. Okay, and yeah. the other question I have is, you would, um, you would not recommend for someone to um, go running or jogging at night for walks at I, night? I mean, I, I would, but, you know, I, I, I think it's fine. It you, sounds like you're saying there's no safer time of the day to be doing there's, it. No, there's no better time of day. You have to be aware of your surroundings day or night. Uh, when you guys um, made that position or the for the legislative for the hunting, yeah. was it as open season or just specifically? Paid? No, no, no. It was very regulated. In fact, the season that we proposed was, I think, about it was a week or ten days. It was it had all sorts of rules. It was not an open season. Uh, just well, do what you want. Well, I mean, I don't know anything about hunting, but it yeah. sounds like open season would be a, like a. I don't know how that is you're in the... No, it's a very... No, our, job, our, job is, our job is to manage. Is that hard to approve, open season? Our job is to manage the population, and we would never intentionally over-harvest. We have a lot of data with the bear and the other things. Well, I'm just saying, if it's open season, then it's open season. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to know that. Yeah. Well, that's a great idea. Yeah. 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 Yeah
It's you and the bear. You shoot them with a thirty out six. It's done. Yeah, yeah, but you have to be, true. but you have to be reasonable too. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it, you know, because you have a, a weapon and it's in your yard. If he's approaching, no threat to you, an active threat to you and your livestock, doesn't give you a right to shoot it. Just because you're not comfortable. Well, no, I didn't say that. But you let's know, say you were close to the yard and the group fire up like five hundred yards, five hundred feet from home. Yeah, but if you're on a, like a Five acre farm. Right, you're a five acre farm, but he's in a half an acre or an acre away from posing those threats. But that's, that's but, you know, I'm, like, just, I'm just talking to you. Know, you know what I mean? I mean, if, I mean in Avon and Simpson, we pay $20,000 a year in taxes just for public, just for property tax, the highest in the country. We should have the right to walk around our yard anytime. We should have the right for our kids to walk around. We shouldn't be in fear of our life. Well, that's why these time. gentlemen are here to stay to talk but about it's also, it's the also management perspective. options. It's also I, mean, I understand that, but a it's threat. like a criminal in your how, yard. How this gentleman views a threat might be very differently. How I view a bear in my yard might be very different than how you, I guarantee you it is, very different than how you view a right. bear in your yard. Okay. If, so if someone has a fear of, of deer, Right? Is that a legitimate? Is that a legitimate fear? No. And, and, and do you have the right to just shoot that deer because it's in your yard and you're afraid of it? No, because it's not a legitimate fear. Yeah. If, a, if, a, if a normal wild bear walks through your yard, that is not a legitimate fear, and you have no right to kill that bear just for walking through. Well, it. how do you prove it though? I mean, it's, you, if there's we, no we're going to investigate it. Bear, Listen, just it just, it's if it's legitimate, just, it is. We will investigate it's it. It's usually pretty obvious. It's usually pretty obvious. Do you have another question? Yeah. Topic? What, um, what does bear scat look like? Because uh, it kind of looks like dog scat, only mushier oh, and usually a bigger, a bigger pile. pile. Yeah. Depends yeah. what they're eating. Yeah. 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 They see bird seed in it, you know? Yeah. You know, one, one other thing I wanted to say as I was talking about, like the senators and representatives. Like the senators and representatives in bear country tend to support, you know, having a bear harvest. Um, as the bear population continues to expand, as it will, I think there will be more support as more people from other towns are dealing with the issues that you guys here are dealing with in Simsbury. But I can understand why a senator in Killingly might not support a bear hunt because he doesn't, he or she doesn't hear anything. Well, it's funny. Most of my emails were. Do not kill the bears in Simsbury. Even from so from people. Yeah. Yeah. See, so that's like we're probably we're got fighting a two hundred emails saying don't kill the bear. And I think it's even one possible. or two. Because the science so, says you have to call the population. Yeah. The only reason why we're talking about this is because things have changed. Mm -hmm. sure. We didn't talk about bears twenty years ago. Right. And well, I mean, and keep you know, in mind we don't at the DP we can't compose the bill. I mean, the bill has to be composed by <laughs> a senator or yeah. a rep. Right. That's why it's great to get your input. Right. Um, it didn't make it to the house. It started in the summer, mm -hmm. right? and then it got watered down to. Uh, okay. Uh, it turned into a ban on the import of the big five somehow. Something crazy. Uh, which was. So we didn't even get a time chance. It was just all these all these crazy yeah. amendments and it that turned were into lions and zebras. Yeah. Nothing to do with bears, man. When I walk my dog, I wear a bear bell and I put a, yeah. a bell on her. Am I doing that just to feel good about that I'm really going to no, deter no, no. a bear? I, in my, I believe that. Most of the time, when the bears know where you are, they're going to go the other way, and so that's, yeah, that's good. good. What's a bear okay. bell? Yeah. Thank you. Just a bell. You can get him at him. Yeah, a bell. Yeah. Yeah. He's just okay. identifying yourself as a human. Yeah. You're not a target. You're showing you're not a threat. Okay, good. Yeah, absolutely. It's a smart thing. And at least you watch. That's yeah. one of the most affirmative Yeah, the bear right? spray is really good, but you just have to... You don't just buy it and carry it and the one time you use it five years from now, because there's wind involved and there's exactly. a distance. You really need to... Buy it several and practice with it, whatever. It works if you can hit them with it. Yeah. Sounds if you like don't, many air horns are you. better. Your, your best option is probably get the air horn. I think the air horn is the best. If you get a blow back and you know you're in a deficit. If I was having bears in my yard all the time, just like, and I was just, I don't know, just Joe Citizen, maybe I would just keep like a bucket of uh, 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 golf balls around. Because you can throw them really well, really hard, you know. Yeah. Where do you get the air horn? Uh, you could get it at a hardware store, you get it at Cabela's, you get it at Dick's, you can get it at a sports store where they can get soccer cleats. And the bear bells too? Yeah, oh, any kind of bell is a bear bell. I mean, someone would sell a specific one. Look online and you'll see what the different ones are. Yeah, Amazon, that's where you get everything. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like shaking a jar of pennies or something, is that effective? Is that I mean, any wild? noise is effective. I don't carry any of that. I'm going to just, right here, I got this with me all the time. So I yelled at it. one in our yard know? and it didn't even look his way. There's 
there is no one thing that I'm going to tell you that just works. Okay. Whistles work too? Yeah, I, yes. Yeah. You use the incentive to adopt? You know, like you said, sometimes some, all these yeah, things work, but there's no absolutes. I mean, I have to no, do everything he says that sometimes move a beer. Noise work, clapping, air horns, a cruiser, like sirens. Sometimes it comes out of the rice glove of a bean bag, noise work. You can't. So there's no one thing that really does work. I see it's all But you still have to how would you, how would you, yeah, how would you, yeah, how would you uh, submit it? Uh, give it to them, right? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, if you had to buy all that stuff, I don't think you're allowed by regulation to tranquilize bears. No, it, it's impractical what you're saying, but I guess a physician, you could probably get all the stuff you needed. Ma'am? Do they chase? It, like, if I'm running by them, you said they generally are in the woods and they could know that I'm there, but do they... Yeah. Well, the bears chase. that chase people are, yeah. it's a small... It's a very small uh, group of bears that are aggressive towards people that he gave you two examples and one is in Canada and one happened to be in Sessions Woods that we felt a bear was being aggressive, it wasn't chasing a lady, but okay. that's a rare situation. We definitely want to know about a bear that's exhibiting that behavior because that's okay, I rare. Know if that was a yeah, I mean the lady in Town Forest the lady yeah. was chased for several And she yards. was running? Like she was a runner? She tried yes. everything. She was walking, yes. she was running. She was jogging with her dog on a leash. Dog. She, and like you said, she did everything and it didn't and the bear came up. She was jogging, the dog came up five, seven feet right before her and then you know just they followed, followed her for probably over a mile. She was trying all sorts of different things. She tried. No, no, no. we're talking about two different things. Oh. Town Forest and Town Forest. Oh, the one we went to about a month ago. I thought you were talking about the predatory. Oh, yeah, that, no. that was a situation where that was she came around right. the corner, surprised the, the woman, and she had a dog on a leash. The dog eventually pulled the leash out of her hand, I guess. It did? Yeah. And the bear kind of went over top of her, you know, scratched her pretty good in the back, and then ran off. Yeah. Do you have any more questions? Bears. I don't know a lot about bears, but how fast do they run? Like, to, can they? Thirty miles an hour. If they want to. Yeah. That's the most. Yeah. yeah, I mean the most. That's three times faster than the fastest person you've ever run. <laughs> you're not going to outrun them, and you're not going to outclimb them. When you think the weight is oh, ratio of a bear, it's average probably 300 pounds, yeah. it can shoot me up on probably a 60 foot tree in about nine seconds. If it so. did attack you, does it feel? I mean, are you just. No, fight back. Fight, fight back. Fight, yeah, no, fight, fight, fight. fight. Especially in the nose, the face. Okay. Fight back. Black bears, if they attack you, fight back with everything you have. Okay. Yes. Gentlemen, um, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. thank you to the Suzuri Library for hosting us and to SCTV. Um, for filming it, for Wanda Coleman for volunteering to film it, for all of you for coming. And, and I am a legislator who does respond in emails or calls, or if you see me and see a bear at the same time, I'll, I'll respond. But this is a, an issue of concern, and obviously that's the reason why you're here and I'm here. And, um, and again, we're so grateful to have Mark here in town and the resources at the state to work with you to address this issue. And I learned a lot today myself. So thank you so much. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.